I got a lot of interest in my slow cooker chicken corn chowder when I posted it on Facebook and Instagram. So I figured I'd better push a few of the other recipes aside and get a video made for this one. Now that the cooler weather is creeping in, you're going to want something nice and warming and comforting on the menu. And I'll show you how to do it coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today's recipe is one of mine, but it comes at the request of my brother. So he requested that I do a chicken corn chowder so Dan, here it is. And since I'm mentioning my brother, I have to mention my sister, Kelly, or there'll be problems. She didn't request anything, but I have to mention her. So this is my slow cooker chicken corn chowder. And I could have made it in a pot and you can alter this to make it in a pot, but I've had a few people request more slow cooker recipes. So I figured I would oblige with a nice hearty soup for fall. So let's go over the ingredients. I am gonna show you how I'm gonna prep the potatoes. And I also figured I'd, I left one stock, little stock of celery. Um, and I figured I'd show you how I diced that up just in case you need to know. The onion, I do have a little tutorial for prepping onions. So I will leave that on a card right here and I'll also leave it in the description box below if you need to know how to slice, dice, mince, chop, and even I mentioned grating. I don't show it, but I do mention it. Okay, so the ingredients that we are going to need, we have three quarters of a pound of potatoes, which is about two medium potatoes. I have three quarters of a pound of chicken breast, which is one large breast. There are two 15 ounce cans of whole kernel corn, and those are just drained, not rinsed. You could probably use the liquid as part of the liquid for the soup if you wanted it maybe a little cornier flavor, but I prefer draining it and getting more of the creamy taste. And speaking of that, we have two and a half cups of low sodium chicken broth and one half cup of fat free half and half. Oh, I was going to show you the one I used. This is the half and half that I use. You get a quarter cup of this for one bite or one point. I'm on the iTrack Bites Better Balance plan but that's equivalent to the WW Blue plan. So this, for at least those two plans, is one bite for a quarter cup, or one point, and two for a half a cup, which is what we have in here. So let me put this away. So I also have a half a medium onion diced on the recipe, it says a small onion or a meat, half a medium. I had a larger onion, so I used half of that. And then two to three stalks of celery. And like I said, I'm going to show you how, to, how I dice that one up, just in case anyone needs to know. We have a, they changed the label, and I really don't like it. It used to look very nice, and now it looks very blah. But that's neither here nor there. You don't care about my aesthetic soup container choices. Um, one can of the Healthy Request cream of chicken. There's also 98% there's also 98 fat free by Campbell's also. Um, they're both equivalent as far as bites and points go. I don't know why they have two separate ones. Maybe this change in the label means they're merging them. I don't know. 
But anyways, one can of that. Here, in our little spice blend, we have a teaspoon of salt, regular table salt. We have a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of dried thyme, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and then just a pinch of cayenne, which is optional. You don't have to put that in. And surprisingly enough, it was Paul, who does not like spicy foods, who suggested after he tasted the first go around that a little bit of cayenne might actually be good. So who knew? And that is optional. You could even also increase it if you'd like it a little spicier. So that is your call. So I think I've covered everything as far as ingredients. So let me move some stuff around and then I will show you how to prep the potatoes and the celery. Be right back. All right, so for the celery, what I do is I usually cut it in half and then cut each of those in half as well if I want a mince, a smaller dice. Because I'm dicing them, I'm going to cut it into thirds. So it's kind of like I angle it this way and then cut down. And then you can just cut this leftover piece here in half. That's all there is to it. And then just cut through it. And like I said, for the onions, there is a tutorial on this channel showing you different ways to prep onions. So that way I can refer back to that. Um, because onions I will use fairly often. And that's all there is to it. Just a little dice. That's all you need. And like I said, you can increase or decrease this as you like. So let me get this out of the way. We'll go on to the potatoes. Let me grab a paper towel so I'm not trying to hold on to something wet and slippery as I'm trying to cut it. Not a good idea. All right, so because these are going to be diced into about a half inch, what I do is I will cut them right down the middle and then take this and cut this piece in half as well. Just like that. And then I'll set that aside, cut this and then I will take now that they're on a flat surface and stable, I will cut these into three pieces, just like I did with the celery. If my hands will stop shaking and let that happen. Because you want little pieces of potato I mean, if you wanted larger pieces of potato, that's your call. I prefer in a chowder just getting little bits of the potato. But like I always say, this is your meal. You do as you like. And then just go across. So you're just cutting across the sticks you just made and making little dices. So there you go. And this one, like you can scroll, scroll through them like this is a, an app. Um, look through and just see if there's one that maybe got away from you. You can just trim that up a little bit. So I'm going to get this other potato prepped. Then I'll be back to put it all into the slow cooker. Be right back. All right, so I have the potatoes prepped and the celery is all squared away. 
Now I'm going to put a liner in my slow cooker. You don't have to, but it definitely does make cleanup easier. Now these are really meant for bigger slow cookers than mine. I'm only using like a four quart, I think four to six is what I recommend because it's, you don't want one that's too big or everything will be too spread out and cook too quickly. So if you do only have a bigger one, you could probably double this recipe and make more, freeze some and have it on hand. So I've lined it. If you didn't have a liner, you could spray it if you wanted to, but I didn't the last time and it was fine. So first thing to go in is going to be the potatoes. I want those on the bottom so that way they'll get the juices of the chicken dripping down onto them. So the potatoes go in first, then you're going to lay the chicken breast right on top. And then the rest of it, you just kind of throw in. I'm gonna put in the corn and celery first. I have the corn, the onion and celery, now the corn. Then I'm going to sprinkle the spice mixture all over the top. Then I'm going to add in the cream of chicken soup. So what I'm also going to do, if my hands will be steady enough, is just try to rinse out a little bit more and then add in the chicken broth and the fat-free half and half. Get these things out of my way now. And I'm just going to stir just a little bit to get the cream of chicken soup mixed in a little bit and those spices to blend in get incorporated into the liquid then we are just going to put the lid on now you can cook this on high which is what i'm going to do uh, for three to four hours or low for six to eight and it will depend on the doneness of the potatoes so you want the potatoes done to your liking. Um, mine, the first time I went three hours, Paul thought the potatoes were still slightly too tough for his liking. I thought they were okay that way, but um, I would probably go three and a half this time just to make sure, but I'll check and pull one out. But once we get to that point, I will show you how to finish this up and you will have a delicious, very satisfying and warming chicken corn chowder ready for you whenever you get a little chill or need a little quick lunch. So I will be back in a couple of hours to show you the next steps. Okay, welcome back. It has been a little longer than I planned because my body started giving me a few issues so I had to wait for them to calm down before I could come back and finish this up. And you can probably tell from my jaw, there is still a little bit of tension in there. But we are going to wrap this up. Now, this has been, I had this on high for about three and a half hours. So then I turned it down to low just to keep it warm while I was waiting for my body to settle. So. Now that this is done, we're going to take off the lid, obviously, and I am going to find the chicken breast. And we're going to take that out. Now, we're going to shred this. You could, if you wanted to, cut it up into little cubes. I like the texture of shredded. Um, but you do it as you want to do it. Now, the last time that I shredded chicken, I used two forks and pulled it apart. 
And I did have a little difficulty with that, um, just because my muscles, you know, the usual story. Um, and one of my subscribers reminded me, and I don't know why I don't do it more often, of using the mixer. So I did try using the mixer and started getting some splatter of chicken flying around. And then I recalled that my friend Brie from Balancing Life with Brie, I believe she only uses one beater blade when she does it. So I'm going to try it that way. Uh, let me cover this back up for now. I'm gonna try it that way. And we will see how that works for me. Let me move this out of my way and we're gonna shred up this chicken one way or the other. Okay, and there are a few pieces of corn clinging to this. That's not a big deal. Let us see how this works. Let's get to it. Okay, that worked out pretty well. First of all, I had a big bowl, so there, if there wasn't a splatter, it wasn't going far. Um, and definitely using the single beater was the way to go. I think having both of them just made a mess. So thank you, Brie, for showing me the correct way to do this quickly, especially when I'm having some physical difficulties. So this will definitely be the way to go. However, there are some long strings. I want them cut a little bit more. So I'm just gonna get a couple of knives and just cut them a little shorter so they're not long strands of chicken. Actually, that wasn't too bad. It showed it up pretty well. That is definitely the way I'm gonna be doing it from now on. All right, so the chicken is shredded. We're gonna get rid of the mixer and we're gonna bring in the blender. I'll show you in a second. All right, so I'm gonna show you, here's the chowder as it is now and it's fine but it's more like a soup and much less like a chowder. Let me use this hand so hopefully you can see it's more fluid than a chowder really should be. Even with the fat-free half and half and the cream of chicken soup, it's not thick enough to be a chowder. So what we're gonna do we're going to move this aside, pull in the blender, and this up here, it's, they call it a fill cap um, because you can pour stuff in here and fill the blender. You do not want this on when you're blending hot items because if this is on, it's going to build pressure from the steam of the hot soup and the um, whirring, the blending, and the lid's gonna come flying off. You're gonna get soup everywhere, maybe get burned. So never blend hot ingredients when this is on. What we are going to do instead, and I did not get it ready. Shocker, I wasn't prepared. I'm going to grab a kitchen towel, just a regular kitchen towel, because what we're going to do is you need to cover this hole so that the soup, any of the stuff doesn't splatter up, but you need to cover it loosely so that some of that steam can escape, but it's not going to splatter stuff everywhere. So. We have the lid without the fill cup. We have our towel. I'm gonna to put about two and a half cups. Um, a ladle is usually about a half a cup. So 
Fingers crossed my arms stay steady during this transition. Now what you want to do is get a lot of this soup, but you want to get as much of the corn and potato as you can. Because blending that up is going to help thicken the soup. Whoa. All right, so that should be good. I can just put that in there with the chicken for now. All right, so we have about two and a half cups in here. Put the lid on, again, without the fill cap. And then we're gonna puree maybe about a minute until all of these chunks are loosened up. So you're just gonna have your hand loosely at the edge of holding this towel on. You're not gonna press it down and make sure nothing's coming up. You want that steam to escape. But you want this towel here to protect your hand and to keep anything from splattering out. So I'm gonna puree, and since this is, will get loud, I'm going to turn down the volume and meet you on the other side. Okay, so this is pureed up into a nice, thick, creamy substance, and we're going to just add that right back in to the soup, to our chowder. Now that's just using the starchy vegetables, the corn, and the uh, potato to help bulk up the soup and make it more of a chowder without adding any cream or high point items. So let me move this blender out of my way. And now the chicken is going to go back in. And just stir the chicken through. And you can see, much thicker than the soupiness. There you have it. Slow cooker chicken corn chowder. A great way to get soup on the table any time of the year, especially a nice hearty chowder. It's gonna be so warm and comforting in these chilly months ahead. So, this should make about six servings. There are about a cup and a third for one serving. And that would be three bites or three blue points. If you reduced it to a single cup um, and made like eight servings, that would be two bites or two blue points each. But I'm going with a little heartier amount of an extra third cup. So one and one third cups is a serving for three bites, three blue points. So if you're following calories, this would be 192 calories a serving. Fat would be 2.9 grams. Carbs would be 21.8 grams. And protein would be 17.9 grams. So it's a nice hearty soup and it's nicely thickened in a natural way, not adding a lot of gums or creams or butters or anything else. But speaking of adding things, a lot of chicken corn chowder does come with bacon. So I would add a slice of center cut bacon for just one additional bite. Adds a nice little saltiness, a little extra texture, so if you want to spend the extra bite, it is worth adding a slice of bacon crumbled up. You could also change up the vegetables. You could do it like a mixed veggie frozen. You could add carrots. I've seen some people add carrots to this. Although typically I don't believe there are carrots in the soup. 
but you do you. That's the motto here. This is your journey, so do it the way you need to do it. Now, you could also, instead of using the blender, if you have a stick blender, you could also use that. Two things. If you do use a stick blender, do not use a liner because the liner will get torn up and found all throughout your chowder and that nobody wants. The second thing is just puree a bit of it, then stir it around and see if you've gotten to the thickness. You don't want to end up pureeing all of it into one big cream soup. You want to have some of that corn, some of that potato, and definitely make sure you blend before you put the chicken back in. So if you liked this recipe, I did get a lot of people showing interest on Instagram and Facebook. Um, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And why haven't you? I mean, look what you're getting. Also, hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any video so that you are alerted to the fact that it's up there. And if you know anyone who's on a weight loss journey who might find this interesting, please do share the video and let them know that this is an option for them. Follow me over on Instagram and join our two Facebook groups. Um, one's mine, Recipes with Roy, and the other one is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H. And I co-admin that one with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. The one who gave me the trick about using a mixer to shred chicken, but with only one beater. And also thank you to Cheryl, my subscriber, who mentioned on the um, chicken pesto soup recipe about shredding it with the mixer. So thank you, Cheryl, for reminding me of that little trick. Don't know why I wasn't thinking of it considering my issues. So anyway, I hope you will give this a try, especially as the cold wetters, wetter, oh boy. So I hope you will give this a try, especially as the cooler weather starts settling in, at least here in the Northeast. I know I find a lot of comfort in having some soup on hand and I can just store this in the fridge and have it ready to go for a lunch. You could even freeze it um, in portions and have it ready to go if you need to take it somewhere or just have it on hand. I'm going to go have a little comfort of my own right now and I hope you will soon do the same. Until next time. Bye.